Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Juliana Stevens. I'm the owner of the Evolution Store for those of you who might be joining us for the first time. I'm joined uh, this week and every week with my, uh, by my husband, Michael. Hello. Mike, say hi. <laughs> and behind the camera as usual. Yeah, he's behind the scenes and he'll be helping me if you have any questions or comments. Um, he'll be able to read them to me and I can answer them as we go along. So for those of you who have been joining us for the past couple of weeks, you know that we've been showing you a lot of new products that we've been adding to the website. We've also been giving you updates on how the company is doing during the shutdown. Uh, we had to close um, our store on March 17th uh, because of the coronavirus, and we've been closed for essentially two months since then. It's been a very strange and scary time, obviously, for everyone. For small businesses, it's been particularly challenging because there's just no end in sight to when we might be able to get back to some kind of normal. But I do have some good news to share with all of you today, which is that Evolution has received a PPP loan. I know that those have been in the news a lot, so um, I just wanted to share that with you, that uh, we did receive our PPP loan, which is very encouraging. And what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to bring back uh, many of our employees uh, even though our store is not yet open and we don't really have any income coming in because of the funds from the PPP, we can bring back our employees and have them have them work for us in different capacities and try and get creative in how we use people, but we'll be able to bring almost everybody back, which is really exciting. And on top of that, uh, where our warehouse is located is in upstate New York, as I have mentioned before, so our store is in the city but our warehouse is in upstate New York in a region called the Southern Tier. And for those of you who've been following Governor Cuomo's uh, press conferences every day, like I do, you'll, you'll, have, you'll see that um, our, our region is one of the regions that has been cleared to open up effective yesterday, actually, May 15th. So just about two months after, the, after we had to shut down and send everyone home, we're gonna be able to bring everybody back. So that's very exciting. Welcome back to the stream, Philo. Uh, Philo's been joining us, I think, for the past three streams. So that's, just want to say that's great. Yeah, it's great to see people come back uh, week after week and have um, new people join us as well. That's great. So in our upstate warehouse, we are now able to uh, have uh, many of our employees come back. A few of them will continue to work from home, but the others will be able to come in. We're allowed as a uh, small manufacturing facility because this is where we make the majority of the products uh, that we sell in this or many of the products that we sell in the store rather we make up here and so we qualify as a small manufacturing business in that in this region and so people will be able to come back which is very exciting I'm very excited to see everybody on Monday I've missed everybody we've had to make a lot of uh, plans and adjustments to our workspace uh, we're going to be splitting people up so that they're not sharing office spaces anymore. We had a shared office um, layout before. Now everything is going to be spread out. Everyone's going to have their own room. That's why we've had, we're going to continue to have some people work from home just to give everybody more space. And um, everyone's going to have to wear masks all the time. And everyone is going to have to do a lot more cleaning and we're going to be providing PPE and all of these things that all of these adjustments that we have to make to keep everybody safe. But at the same time, uh, I know that the people I've spoken to so far are really excited to be able to come back to work and it'll be great to see everybody and um, what uh, how this is going to affect uh, you guys is that we are going to be able to show a lot of different types of products that we haven't been able to really feature up until now during these um, episodes because we've been so limited in what we've been able to produce uh, because our fabrication department hasn't really been operational. I've been the only one trying to keep up with web orders so we haven't really been featuring all the cool things that we usually can make. Now that we have everybody coming back, we're going to be able to show you a lot of the interesting projects that they're working on. So I really look forward to sharing those with you and um, hopefully uh, you'll find them as, as, as interesting and creative as I do. So going forward, we're going to, next week we're going to do this, um, I'm going to do a live stream on Saturday at 1 next week, just as we've been doing for the past uh, several weeks now. We may adjust that going forward now that we have employees coming back. 
um, we may try and coordinate with some of them. Maybe we can, um, so I can show you maybe some of the projects that they're working on, or maybe we can uh, introduce you to some of the people on our team um, because they're all fascinating, creative people. And I'm sure they have lots of interesting uh, stories that they could share with you and their perspective would be great to have as well. Um, I enjoy speaking to you myself and, and, and Mike enjoys, you know, helping out as well, but it would be nice if I could have you know, someone to, to chat with as well. So we're all just um, very excited to be able to see other human beings uh, starting on Monday. So our team is gonna be coming back, or partially our team is gonna be coming back. And then the folks in the store, obviously we're going to kind of rework their job responsibilities so that they're not obviously in the store helping customers. Um, we can have one person come in at a time uh, by themselves to do certain tasks um, such as inventories and uh, fulfilling web orders and stuff like that. So we're going to ramp that up slowly. In the meantime, people will be working from home. So that's the update from us. Very exciting news to try and get things going a little bit. And um, thank you all for your support during this time. It's been so great connecting with so many of you. And um, yeah, so we are hopefully starting to open up little by little, get the gears turning again. And it's very exciting time. So wanted to give you that update. So today, uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you is a couple of different things. So kind of a two in one product. This is a relatively recent addition to our website. I've I've sort of featured these very um, briefly in a previous episode, I kind of just mentioned them in passing, but they're very cool. So I wanted to give them a little bit more time to be in the spotlight. Um, these are Cobra vertebrae necklaces and Cobra vertebrae bracelets. So I'll give you a little bit of a closer look at these. Um, as you can see, it's the whole basically spinal column of a Cobra snake, which is very cool. And it goes all the way around. And so we have them in different sizes. Obviously this is a much thicker part of the snake and this is a much thinner part. You can see the size difference right there to compare. This is going to be you know, closer towards the end of the tail, obviously, and this is closer towards the top of the head, so thicker. Um, so the, the species name of the cobras is Naja species, so that's the genus name rather I should say. So cobras are venomous and um, they inject their venom through hollow fangs. So that's pretty cool. That's one thing that they, that's one of their defining characteristics. How do you spell that? Naja? Yeah. N-A-J-A. -A. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to look that up, that's how it is. And uh, do you know, Michael, where uh, cobras are typically found um, throughout the world? I don't think they're in the U.S., no. Uh, probably in Asia. Mm -hmm. If I were to guess somewhere in Asia, I would say North, uh, well, you know, Africa is not Asia, but North Africa, uh, South Asia, somewhere around there. Does that make sense? That's exactly right. So uh -huh. they are, they are native to Africa and Asia, particularly Southeast Asia in uh -huh. that, in that kind of a region, but kind of all over the place. And um, I'm particularly interested in etymology, which is the history of words and where they come from. And so I always like to look up why species have their names and what it means. And in this particular case, the Naja genus uh, comes from Sanskrit. And I will uh, try and save that to the end if anybody can guess what the word Naja means or is you know referring to in Sanskrit. Think of it as what what uh, aspect of the cobra it is referring to. Uh -oh. So that's a little little uh, quiz. So if you have any um, any guesses, you can put them in the comments and I'll let you know in a few minutes if so you're right. So you give us a clue. So it refers to some part of the body of the animal? Some aspect, oh, aspect of the snake. Some like characteristic, characteristic. Some characteristic of the snake. Okay. So that's a little, little quiz. Uh, and uh, so one thing that uh, all cobras have in common, because there are lots of different species of cobras, um, but one thing that unites them all together is their ability to coil up and raise about half of their body up off of the ground. Not all snakes can do that. Some of them can, but not all of them. 
And so that's one of the ways that they are, um, one of the thing that ties all the different species of cobras together. And then the other thing, of course, is that characteristic hood that they have. Uh, when they're threatened, they rear back and they have this um, skin around their neck. It's not always extended, but when they are threatened, they can flatten these sort of flaps against the back of their necks and creating this hooded aspect. And what that does is it um, makes makes them appear larger and more threatening to predators. A lot of different animals use this as a survival mechanism. They try and make themselves appear bigger. And so that's why the snake does that. That's why cobras do that. So so they don't do that when they are like attacking. They only do that as like more like a protection. It's a defense mechanism, I believe. Yeah. Oh, because usually when you watch old movies, right, they have these cobras and they always kind of like do that before they jump well it makes sense because probably in the, the way they're is feeling threatened and scared <laughs> and that's why it's attacking in, in you know in self-defense so you know beware what you see in hollywood it may not be totally accurate um so i don't know if anybody guessed it right but i will tell you what the uh sanskrit word for hold on let me try no you want to guess sure uh trying to think i mean there's a a, a dungeon and dragons monster it's called naga with a g mm-hmm so I'm trying to think if there's anything common or, or whatever. But uh, I, uh, I mean, the most unique characteristic of the snake is the little flaps, right? So does it have anything to do with the uh, flaps? No, it doesn't have anything to do with the shape of the snake. No? No. Uh, my last guess is the color. No. Okay, what is it then? Well, maybe it was a little misleading. It doesn't have to do <laughs> specifically with cobras. Think about more like snakes in general. Uh, they slither. Yeah. So, so go ahead. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you no more, no more guesses. <laughs> um, it means naked. So oh, what? <laughs> it means hairless or naked. So snakes obviously have no fur or feathers or anything like that. So that's what the word comes from. So uh, when you think of snakes, uh, you can... Uh, Kind of uh, uh, remember that the Sanskrit word for snake is naked. So that's, that's the definition of that. So, um, so these, uh, uh, so cobras are often um, food sources in, uh, in the areas in which they're native. So all throughout Southeast Asia and lots of different countries, people eat cobras. And so these vertebrae are a byproduct of the food industry. So um, after people are done eating them and the bones are discarded, um, we have people come and collect them and make them into jewelry and other kind of uh, souvenirs and stuff. So that's where, that's where these come from. Uh, one cool thing about these, uh, this jewelry is that it's adjustable. So you can see here um, the, the end of the bracelet opens up. And so you can slip it on easily, and then you can tighten it. And so that is true for the uh, necklace and the bracelet. So it's easy on, easy off. That's one cool feature about it. And also, um, what I did not show you is that it has two colors. So it comes in uh, natural, basically, white. So these are not, the bones haven't been painted or, or dyed or anything like that. But in, the, in this set, they have been. So they're painted black. So that's very cool. I, had, I have one of those for the past two years, and it's still good in terms of closing and opening. It's pretty oh, durable. yeah, they're very well constructed. Definitely. The, um, you know, the craftsmanship is very good here uh, with, the, with the knot. It's very well made, very durable. And, yeah, just very cool. So you can mix and match. You could have a white necklace with a black bracelet or vice versa. Lots of cool different thing, different ways of wearing them. So those are the Cobra vertebrae bracelets and necklaces that we have on our website. And um, just like every week, the items that we're featuring uh, on this program are going to be free shipping in the US. So if you order any of these items that I'll be showing you today between now and next Friday, uh, you, you will get free shipping with uh, USPS. So definitely check those out. Now is a good time to get them. And so the, the, 
The second product that I'm going to be showing you today, we're going to do, usually we try and do three products, but since the necklaces and the bracelets are kind of two in one, we're just going to do one more today. But it's also kind of a multi-product thing. So I present you with our Scorpion Lollipops. So this is a true classic Evolution product. Um, we have been carrying these probably since the very beginning for 27 years now. And it is by far one of the most popular things in the store. People are constantly checking these out. They're very excited about our Scorpion Lollipops. And so I wanted to bring these on today because it also uh, ties in with the Cobra Vertebrae uh, necklaces and bracelets in the sense that they're both venomous creatures. So I thought that would be a cool little tie-in. And there is a key difference between venomous and poisonous, which is why these can be eaten. Mike, do you know the difference between venomous and poisonous? Difference between venomous and poisonous. Poisonous makes you sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for a long time and venomous like uh, just stuns you no <laughs> <laughs> no I, I play too much video games no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not a question of degree it's a question of type which is that venomous means you're in trouble if it eats you if it bites you and poisonous is you're in trouble if you eat it so if you eat something poisonous like a frog, for example, oh. a poisonous tree frog or something, you will get sick if you eat it. It's okay. toxic to you if you ingest it. Now, if on the other hand, if a snake, for example, bites you and is venomous, it injects venom into you. So you're in trouble if it eats you. So you can eat venomous things. Absolutely. As long as they're not poisonous. Just don't I eat mean, the I venom. I must have known that at some point, but so that's why people that's eat. That's why people can eat cobras and stuff like that because they're venomous, but they're not poisonous. So it's different. Uh huh. So it's um, it's a, it's a key distinction, and that's the same thing with scorpions. Scorpions are venomous, but not poisonous, which means that you can eat them. Um, so that's something uh, interesting to keep in mind because that's one of the biggest questions we get all the time with people when they see these in the store is, can you really eat that? Am I going to get sick if I eat that? The, the answer is no. They're absolutely 100% safe. They've been cleaned and cooked, and um, they are definitely edible, and we encourage you to eat them because they are quite tasty. So scorpions, um, scorpion lollipops, have, as, as I said, been a sort of fixture in our store for for decades, but scorpions themselves uh, have also been a fixture in the animal kingdom for decade, for, for more than decades, I should say, for millions and millions of years. Uh, so they first appeared in the fossil record about 430 million years ago. So they've been around for a very, very long time. And it's believed that maybe they originally evolved as um, sea creatures. They lived in shallow water. That's the idea. So you can see that makes sense. They're kind of, they're similar sort of morphologically to lobsters and crabs and stuff like that. They're in the same, um, same overall family and they're related. So they're kind of distant cousins. So that's why they believe that there's some relation there. And so 430 million years ago during the Silurian period, that's when um, scorpions were first documented. And so scorpions, as I said, they're, they're, um, they're not actually insects. So they're in the order called arachnida. They're in the same order as spiders. So they're a little bit different. So when we talk about eating insects and stuff like that, it's kind of a bit of a misnomer. Technically, they're not insects, they're arachnids, um, but you, as a shorthand, people usually call these kinds of arthropods insects regardless. Um, so one thing that characterizes it, of course, is its eight legs. And most importantly, its venomous stinger at the tail, and at the tip of its tail. So that is, um, that is what a scorpion is. Uh, do you know if those are fully grown? Um, I believe like that, that they're species? adults. Yeah, so, so the, the way that... Um, arthropods and and you know insects in general work is that um, they don't they don't grow in the same way that mammals grow right when a baby is born 
it's little and then it turns into a bigger adult, right? Mm -hmm. A human baby or any kind of mammal, a dog, cat, whatever. It turns into, it, it starts off as a smaller version of, of itself and then grows into an adult version. But with insects, imagine like a caterpillar and a butterfly, it's not quite the same. They go through a metamorphosis during the different phases of life. So you can't say that's a baby butterfly. No, it's when it's in its final form, it's in its final form. So that's something that's something that people ask a lot. So this is just a small species of scorpion, but they are adults because they're in their adult form. And so there are um, so a lot of people obviously are very scared of scorpions. As I said, uh, they are um, they are venomous. However, only 25 species of scorpions are actually dangerous to humans. So um, most scorpions that you would encounter in the world um, might sting you, but not. Uh, not completely incapacitate you. So there are a few that are deadly, but not, not, not very many when you consider the entire uh, gamut of scorpions that are, that are around. Um, and so one more thing about these delicious lollipops is number one, that they are delicious. We have several different flavors. I will show you. This is strawberry. Very yummy. We have apple, which is nice and fresh and banana which is weird i think it's kind of the stranger of the flavors um so scorpion and banana is a very interesting combination and blueberry which and they're all beautiful they're all really brightly colored um they're really nice to look at um they're tasty to eat but they're also kind of just fun if you want to have them around uh we try and um give these away during Halloween to trick-or-treaters and we literally cannot give them away. People will turn them down. We try and give them to kids and they, they are not interested. So um, if you are interested, definitely check these out. It makes for a good trick-or-treat um, experience, but you would be surprised. Some kids would just be like, no, I don't want that. Thank you, but no thanks. They last for a while as well. Yes, they are um, very good suckers. They are very well, uh, you know, it's a nice recipe that they have. They last a very long time. Um, definitely uh, a good snack and also protein because uh, scorpions uh, and other insects are a very good source of protein. So this is healthy, maybe. Um, I can say that it is actually made, um, it, they are sugar free. I checked the ingredients. Um, they're made with a sugar substitute called maltitol, M-A-L-T-I-T-O-L. -T -T so that's something for people to look into if they're sensitive, if they have glucose issues, um, to make sure that that's something that is um, okay for you to eat. And uh, yeah, uh, as I said, they're 100% real, 100% real scorpions. Very tasty, very yummy. They do taste a little bit like uh, Equal, maybe? I don't know if the, Equal has the same thing in it. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what kind of sweetener yeah, to compare it to. But it is not like sugary. It doesn't taste like sugar, sugar. Yeah, they're very good, though. Yeah, they're good. Very I like good. it. Very, very tasty. And so, again, we're going to be doing free shipping on all four flavors of Scorpion Lollipops for the next week until next Friday. So you can definitely check those out. Try one, try them all. Uh, enjoy, bon appetit. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to show you these scorpion lollipops and our cobra necklaces and bracelets. So this is our little venomous themed episode of things uh, that you didn't know that you could eat that you could eat. So yep. enjoy that. Uh, so. Until next week, uh, thank you again for joining us. As I mentioned, we're going to be um, uh, uh, doing the next episode is going to be next Saturday at 1, just like this week. And then um, the week after that, we may be changing the time, so we'll post an update on that. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend, and enjoy. Bye.